Houthis agree to restore UN brokered truce, negotiate with opponents. Al Malacca. The Houthis have agreed to restore a lapsed UN brokered ceasefire in Yemen for six months. Discuss the exchange of all the prisoners they hold and engage in direct negotiations with the Yemeni government, Yemeni government officials, and local media said on Thursday. In return, the Houthis will get salary payments for several servants in areas they control and an easing of restrictions on Sana'a Airport and Hodeida Port. Saudi officials informed Yemen's presidential leadership council in Riyadh that in addition to the truce and prisoner swap, the Houthis agreed during direct talks to negotiate with the Yemeni government for six months under the auspices of the UN and discuss a two-year transitional period to Yemeni government officials told Arab News. The council, chaired by Rashad al-Alimi, had convened in Riyadh to discuss how to respond to the latest peace proposals and met Saudi Defense Minister Prince Khalid bin Salman on Wednesday. The two officials said council members would be prepared to engage in direct talks with the Houthis if it could result in a comprehensive peace agreement that ends the conflict. The council also asked for assurances the Houthis would adhere to the terms of the agreements. In an unprecedented and surprising reversal, the Houthis, who have long rejected peace overtures, also agreed to halt attacks on oil infrastructure in government-controlled regions, open all highways in Yemen's provinces, and end their siege of Taiz. Based on their negotiations with Houthi representatives, Saudi officials have developed strategies for achieving a compromise between the warring sides that results in peace agreement in Yemen. There are Saudi ideas for a UN-led initiative. A Yemeni government official who spoke on the condition of anonymity because he was not authorized to brief reporters told Arab News. This is a lengthy peace plan centered on proclaiming a suspension of hostilities and all military activities, then establishing trust, then forming technical committees and opening all ports, then direct negotiation leading to formation and a transitional period. The official added that the Saudis would deliver the pre Presidential Leadership Council's response to the Houthis. A previous ceasefire deal broke down in October when the two sides failed to reach an agreement on an extension. Al Mastar Online, a Yemeni news site, reported that the Houthis have demanded that Arab coalition leaves Yemen within a year of an agreement taking effect uh, and promised to allow the swift deployment of UN salvage teams to the Safar, a derelict oil, oil storage vessel. It's been moored in the Red Sea off the coast of Yemen since the conflict in the country began with little or no maintenance, sparking growing fears of a devastating oil spill. Yemeni analysts ascribed the surprising Houthi U-turn to, to the recent reconciliation between Saudi Arabia and Iran, as well as the militia's inability to achieve military gains on the ground. The Houthis are fearful about losing Iran's assistance. Ali al-Faqi, the editor of al Mastar Online, told Arab News, one of Iran's commitments under its deal with Saudi Arabia is to halt its projects in the area, and the Houthis are one of its arms. He added that another factor that had influenced the Houthi rush to peace was the desire to regroup and negotiate deals with regional partners after failing to defeat their opponents militarily. The Houthis have reached a point where they cannot accomplish more than they have in the past, and if Iranian help ends, they'll be exposed and lose a lot of ground, al-Faqi says. From Al Arabiya News, Saudi Omani delegation to hold ceasefire talks with Houthis in Yemen Sana'a sources. A Saudi Omani delegation is planning to travel Yemen's capital Sana'a next week to hash out a permanent ceasefire deal with Houthi or deal with Houthi officials and in the country's eight year conflict, two sources involved in the talk said. If an agreement's reached, Yemen's warring parties can announce an agreement before Islam's Id al Fitr holiday starting April twentieth, the source said. The discussions are focused on a full reopening of Yemen's port and airports, payment of wages of public servants, a rebuilding process, and a political transition, they added. In, ad in an additional sign of progress, the Arab coalition lifted eight-year-old restrictions on imports headed for Yemen's southern ports, the internationally recognized government said. This follows the easing of restrictions in February on co commercial goods entering the Houthi-held western port of Hodeida, the country's main seaport. The Yemeni government said on Thursday that commercial ships would be allowed to dock directly in southern ports, including Aden, on all goods would be cleared, or and all goods would be cleared with some exceptions. Abu Bakr Abi, deputy head of Yemen's Chambers of Commerce, told Reuters ships would not have to stop at the Saudi Red Seaport of Jeddah for security checks for the, for the first time since the Arab coalition intervened in Yemen in 2015. 
Abid said more than 500 types of goods would be allowed back in Yemen through southern ports, including fertilizers and batteries, after they were removed from a list of banned products. Saudi-led coalition lifts imports restrictions in South Yemen. Saudi-backed government says commercial ships will be allowed to dock directly in sou southern ports, including Aden. A Saudi Arabian-led military coalition has lifted eight-year-old restrictions on imports he headed for Yemen's southern ports as moves towards peace continue. The announcement signals progress in peace talks with Houthi rebel group in the north and follows the easing of restrictions on commercial goods entering the Houthi-held western port of Hodeida, the country's main seaport. It comes as Yemen's warring sides work to reinstate an expired United Nations broker truce. The Saudi-backed government based in the South said in a statement late on Thursday that the commercial ships would be allowed to dock directly in southern ports, including Aden, and all goods would be clear with some exceptions. Abu Bakr Adi, deputy head of Yemen's Chamber of Commerce, said ships would not have to stop at the Saudi Red Seaport of Jeddah for security checks for the time since the Saudi-led coalition intervened in Yemen in 2015. Hadid said more than 500 types of goods, including fertilizers and batteries, would be allowed back into Yemen through southern ports after they were removed from a list of banned products. There was no immediate response from the Saudi government. The moves to increase the flow of goods to ports across the county or the country appear to be an indication of progress in direct talks between Saudi Arabia and the aligned Houthi movement, which run in parallel with United Nations peace efforts. The Houthis, who removed the internationally recognized government from the capital Sana'a in late 2014, are de facto authorities in North Yemen and say they are fighting a corrupt system and foreign aggression. The conflict is widely seen in the region as a proxy war between rival Saudi Arabia and Iran. Both nations recently agreed to restore relations severed in 2016 that moved seen as supporting peace efforts in Yemen. I would, I'm, I'm going to push back against that because I've watched speech, speeches of the leader of, of our Houthi uh, Badr al Din, and um, he, he is not, I mean, he, I've, I've heard him uh, attribute Oman's assistance, and maybe it's uh, on purpose, but I haven't heard him mention Iran in the ways that um, you know, Saudi Arabia is clearly involved. Iran is not clearly involved. The Saudi Houthi talks are focused on a full reopening of Houthi controlled ports and Sana'a's airport, the payment of wages for public servants, and a timeline for non-Yemeni forces to exit the country, sources say. A Saudi-led coalition had since 2015 imposed severe restrictions on the flow of goods into import reliant Yemen, where wars devastated the economy, contributing to what the United Nations has called the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Opposition mounts against formation of Zionist National Guard under far-right minister. Actually, watch this space. Remember your engagement through a like, a share, and a sub will accelerate us at warp speed towards the continuation of our mission to truthfully go where no news will have been going before. It is obvious the most simple-minded that Loki is of an inferior breed. The obvious visual evidence, Commissioner, is that he is of the same breed as yourself. Are you blind, Commander Spock? Well, look at me. I thought you scientists were supposed to keep an open mind. There's a difference between keeping an open mind and believing something because you want it to be true. Your friend Spock is a logical man. I find your arguments strewn with gaping defects in logic. Most Maybe illogical even. reaction. We demonstrated our superior weapons, they should have fled. You mean they should have respected us? Of course. Mr. Spock, respect is a rational process. Did it ever occur to you they might react emotionally? With anger? Doctor, I'm not responsible for their unpredictability. You do not think like the others. There are no colors to your patterns of logic. There's only black and white. Logical, unemotional, completely pragmatic. And we poor, irrational humans whip them in a fair fight. Now you'll find yourself back among us illogical humans again. Which I find eminently satisfactory, Doctor. For nowhere am I so desperately needed. Because she feels. I don't. All I know is logic. 
Will you try to understand how we feel about our life here? About each other? Emotions are alien to me. I'm a scientist. You're gonna leave here without them? Run off on some wild goose chase halfway across the galaxy just because you found a discrepancy in a hydrogen cloud? Doctor, I am chasing the Captain, Lieutenant Uhura, and Ensign Sheko, not some wild aquatic fowl. Mr. Spock, you have a remarkably logical and analytical mind. Thank you. I prefer the concrete, the graspable, the provable. You'd make a splendid computer, Mr. Spock. Yeah! <laughs>